I'd like to call to order the uh, ninth meeting of the 2015-2016 Common Council. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day? Thank you, Mayor. When the day is over, let it go. And I don't have children to watch that movie, so don't kid me about it. <laughs> don't dwell on what should have or could have happened. Tomorrow is another day and another chance. Thank you very much. Would the clerk please call the roll? There are 12 present. Alderman Carlson, Alderman Herman, and Alderman Damro are excused. Next, we'll go on to the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand and join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, we'll go on to approval of the minutes from our last meeting. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Those minutes are before us for any discussion. Seeing none, would all those in favor please signify by saying aye. 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 And uh, opposed? Motion is approved. Uh, item 4.1 is resignations. City Attorney. Yes, there is one resignation uh, addressed to uh, Mayor Vandersteen from Sean Anishik. Uh, it says, it's with sincere regret and careful consideration that I'm submitting my resignation from the uh, Building Use in Committee. And she explains her reasons and thanks uh, the Council for the opportunity to serve. Thank you very much. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that support. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 5.1 is appointments. City Attorney. And there are several of those as well. Uh, first one uh, to the Common Council. Uh, I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Scott Grinke to be considered for appointment to the Business Improvement District to fill the unexpired position of Tom Brickley, whose term expires on December 31, 2015, signed by the mayor. Second, uh, I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Jake Toman to be considered for appointment to fill the newly created position as a business owner on the Business Improvement District. His term will expire 12-31-16, signed by the mayor. And then finally, submitting the following app appointment for your consideration, Michael Langan, to be considered for appointment to the Building Use Committee to fill the unexpired position of Sean Anishik, whose term expires 4 25 of 16, again signed by the mayor. And all those appointments will lie over. Next, we'll move on to an election of Alderperson for District Number 2. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that nominations be received from the floor, voting to be done by open ballot, and if more than two candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list and balloting to continue until one candidate receives a majority. Second. Thank you for that motion. Second. Alderman Hammond. Thank you again. I would like to place in nomination Roman Droughton and Ta uh, Tammy Robb. Second. Thank you for that support. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Alderman Hammond. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I move that nominations be closed. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of closing nominations, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nominations are closed. Would uh, the city clerk and the city attorney please hand out the ballots? Okay. Um, next, we'd like to invite the candidates up to uh, say a few words uh, about their uh, past history and their reason for their candidacy tonight. And first, I'd like to call up Tammy Robb. Hi, good evening. My name is Tammy Robb, if some of you don't know me already. Um, I would like to be considered for the District 2 Alderman position as what some of my neighbors and family members have said. This best kind of describes me. I'm a responsible homeowner um, and I'm raising a daughter. I'm very articulate and a confident woman, very professional. I'm a great public speaker and presenter, strong communicator, extremely organized. I apply problem-solving skills as well as resolve complex situations and I'm honest and hardworking. 
Some of the things that, if you haven't seen my resume um, in the last few days, some kind of a, an overview of who I am. I'm a passionate sales and marketing person, um, possessing exceptional strategic, organizational analysis and leadership capabilities. In the past, I've done consultative selling through business to consumer as well as business to business and international sales channels and worked with some of the largest um, food manufacturers in the world and abroad and some of those um, food creations have come to fruition here um, locally where we've built many plants not only in Wisconsin but also in Canada. I have a demonstrated track record of success developing, implementing and managing innovative and integrated um, traditional mobile and social um, campaigns. I've conducted market identification and research with creative concepting and media expertise. I have in the past consistently met corporate goals through strategic planning, program development, project ex execution, and delivery of exceptional customer service. Professionally, some of the people locally um, or even in central Wisconsin and abroad have said about me that I provide uh, a very strong market strategy, market research, social media marketing, um, search it's SEO, search optimization, mobile banking, um, social networking, media networking, advertising, media planning, buying uh, TV commercials with some of the biggest players here in Sheboygan County, graphic design, communications, public relations, budgeting, strategic planning, financial planning with multi-million dollar budgets, event planning with over 250 local events for Sheboygan County, leadership, um, new business development, compliance and very strong organizational skills. One of the things that we have been, or I kind of brought to Community Bank when I worked there, was we piloted a, a children's reading program for Money Smart Week. And um, Sheboygan County was recognized by the Federal Reserve in Chicago, and that is now going to be one of the standards that we've been working on over the past few years. So um, if anybody would like a copy of my resume, I'd be more than happy to share that. Thank you so much, Tammy. Right. Next, I ask Roman Drawn to please step up to the podium. I'd like to thank everybody for the opportunity to be here. I've known some of you from various boards and positions, uh, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, for nine years. I'm serving again. I got pulled in from Tim Caker to do another round for that, but we'll, we'll help him out. It's a good cause for uh, Sheboygan. The reason I'm running for the position, I, you know, I've been in Sheboygan about 15 years now. I came up from Milwaukee. And the one thing about Sheboygan that instantly shows is how passionate people are about the community, about how much they've invested from their history of, of family, of hard work, and, you know, I see a lot of forward progress that's happening. Anybody that drives down 8th Street can see the things that are starting to happen. You start to see some of these positive things in motion, and that happens because of the hard work of what goes on right here in this room, among other things and other people. I'd like to be part of that. I think that we can really keep things moving in Sheboygan. Um, I know we've been through some hard times. I know there's been some, uh, some delicate things to talk about right now, but, um, you know, I think that the hard decisions have been made. And there's a reason for that. And I hope that we can work together and move forward to really make stuff happen in this town. I, too, with my background, I'm also, it's kind of interesting hearing everything that you do. I'm the creative director at Dufour Advertising and part owner. Uh, when Tim Dufour passed away, uh, we purchased the company as a group. And uh, we now still have the office building right downtown on 8th Street. And, uh, you know, it's been an interesting course for this last 15 years being in Sheboygan. And the one thing I'd like to say is that, if anything, I'd like to serve because uh, I, I'm ready to roll up my sleeves and really get into this and do what we need to do. Um, I'd like to thank you for your time. I do have my resume if anybody has any questions or any further input on that. Thank you very much, Roman. Okay, I'd ask the aldermen to fill out their ballots and then pass them down to the city attorney. Alderman, if you could print your last name so we can read it, that'd be great.
Our new alderman is Roman Drawn. Congratulations. And Tammy, thank you very much for uh, your interest in the job. <laughs> Roman, you're welcome to step uh, on the other side of the, uh, the, 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 the railing there and uh, take that open seat in the back row. John, you want to pass him an agenda? So. The next item on the agenda is public forum. City attorney, city clerk. Um, first this evening would be Delcy Johnson. Delcy, if you could come up, please. Delcy, I'll need your home address. 1306 North 3rd Street, Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes. <clears throat> Mayor Vandersteen, City Clerk Richard, City Attorney Adams, Aldermen and Citizens. The information I will share with you is based on data received in an FOIA request to Nancy Buss for expenses and revenues related to the operation of the ambulance service in 2014. As you know, the ambulance budget only includes salaries and benefits for the four newest hires, but operating three ambulances 24-7 requires 21 firefighters. Salaries and benefits for the four firefighters was $297,123. Salaries and benefits for 17 additional firefighters would be $1,262,777. EMS calls accounted for more than 75% of the incidents that the department responded to. 75% of $1,262,777 is 947083 dollars bringing total personnel expenses to $1,244,206. Adding other budgeted expenses brings total expenses to $1,537,850. This includes $87,030 for leasing the ambulances and $108,045 for contracted billing services. Total billings were $2,782,880. Actual collections were $1,195,999 or 43% of billings. Adjustments or billings that were not collected were 57% of billings. Subtracting expenses, expenses from actual collections results in a loss of $341,851, which is almost twice the loss in 2013. But that's not the whole story. The amount calculated for personnel expenses is based on the salary and benefits of $74,281 for each of the four newest hires. The average salary and benefits of the 17 additional firefighters would be higher than that base figure. Also, the figures I cited do not include any administrative costs. <clears throat> the department does not figure one dollar of the salaries and benefits of any of the administrative personnel as part of the operating cost of the ambulance service. Deputy Chief Butler was hired late in 2007 to run the ambulance service when the department took it over in 2008 and is identified in the 2013 and 2014 annual report says Deputy Chief EMS slash Health and Safety Emergency Management. <clears throat> Based on my firsthand experience in seeking information about ambulance calls, I can tell you that it takes more than one person to provide simple information, clearly indicating that several department employees other than firefighters are involved in running the ambulance service. I did not seek salary or benefit figures for any administrative personnel, but if administrative costs were added, the actual cost of providing the ambulance service would be much higher and the loss much greater. Fond du Lac, however, which operates three fire stations, includes administrative costs when figuring the cost of their ambulance service. Their department is organized a bit differently than the Sheboygan Fire Department, but they include 50% of the salaries for their fire chief, three assistant fire chiefs, an administrative assistant and a records clerk, and 75% of the salaries for their paramedics. 
At the time the city decided to take over the ambulance service, a story in the Sheboygan Press on May 30th, 2007 noted, and I quote, if the service loses money, city fire officials will cut the department's budget to make up for that loss, end of quote. Of course, it's easier to avoid that situation if you don't count all expenses. <clears throat> Last year, when I presented information about the cost of the ambulance service in 2013, Chief Romas wrote a letter to the press in which he stated that I had presented wrong information. When I met with him to discuss this, he told me that all my figures were correct, but that I had the wrong perspective. I stand by my figures and I stand by my perspective, as do a great many of your constituents who believe, as I do, that government should not do what the private sector can do. In 2014, the department responded to 48 building fires, which is only 1% of the total incidents the department responded to. With five stations, that's less than one call per station per month. Of course, having so few fires is a positive, but it begs the question of how the department should be staffed. When organizational changes are suggested, the firefighters object with the Excuse argument me, Dulcie, that... would you like <clears throat> an extra minute, please? Please. <clears throat> when organizational changes are suggested, the firefighters object with the argument that minutes count. Yet 40 to 50 percent of the department's firefighters live outside the city and depend on volunteer fire services to protect their family and properties. And that apparently is okay with them. Evidently, minutes don't matter if you are a fireman and live outside the city. I have learned that the department has the possibility of six retirees this year. Perhaps this could present an opportunity for changes in the department. You need to ask if the city needs five fire stations and if the city needs to operate three ambulances 24-7. Thank you. Thank you, Dulcie. Next on our list will be Mike Brunette. Mike, could you come to the front, please? <clears throat> and Mike, I need your home address. 1925 South 26th Street. And you will have five minutes. All right. Um, what woke me up is uh, 7.1, an ordinance by Alderman Belanger um, amending various sections of Chapter 2 of the Municipal Code to provide for direct referral of of communications, resolutions, and ordinances to committees and eliminate the requirement of a second reading except where otherwise required by law, committee of the whole. And unlike Dulce, I have no facts, knowledge, and don't even under fully understand what I'm talking about, but yet I'm thinking what this does is short circuit the process where things could actually come up. And I understand there's a 72 hour dealy where if you get, get it in, and there's part of in here about where if it in, it's going to cost money, which who knows what really costs money and doesn't, as Dulce might attest to. But it sounds like a way of short-circuiting a lot of what's going on and public discussion. It's hard enough to get information out of here the way it is. I mean, it, it's, it really is. If you go on, on by the city site and try to find stuff, it's a little painful. And when you do go to meetings, like you go to the finance meeting and you want to hear what's going on with the budget and the new TID district, you're kind of in the dark, can't really hear, and you don't know what's going on. So every chance there is for word to get out and things to go through different committees helps. I mean, it, it's, I might be completely wrong on this, and maybe this doesn't short circuit anything, but from a lot of the dealings from the quarry to the armory and all other things, there's often a slow up, hurry up, this needs to get done, this doesn't need to get done, da 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 da, and timing. And if you can fire things through and like have a joint committee meeting where you have two committees fire it through really quickly, things can just go through like a rocket and nobody really knows they existed. This seems like that would speed things up like that, and I don't think that can be good for anybody. Um, what's the hurry? And, and on another note, I happened to stop by the armory on my way over here, and I understand that somehow the citizens needed to sell all the history in there, even though I don't recall anybody from council approving it or 
anybody at any level approving it, but I'm looking at there, there's stuff that I can't believe anybody actually bought would be gone, like the thing in there telling how many people are in there for wrestling or whatever things you would call history that are just gone. And then the other thing I notice is there's a hole on the side of the armory that wasn't there a couple months ago on the corner that's about the size that you could bury me in. And it's like, I hope it's a coincidence, but it's kind of like, what, why is it there? How is it there? It's just an odd thing. I mean, I understand you don't want the armory, but it's, but it's like the building was in pretty darn good shape last I was in. And that's all I got. Thanks, Mike. That's it for this evening. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we'll move on to uh, a presentation on the 2016 uh, budget. Uh, Alderman Hammond has prepared this uh, for the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee, and we asked him to also present it to the council. Don, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right, I'm going to ask Jim and Nancy to join me um, for this uh, portion of the show. All right, so last Wednesday we presented the budget to the Strategic Fiscal Planning um, Committee with the objective of um, looking at how we laid out the budget um, to give you an understanding of, of what our goals and objectives were um, with the budget. Now, of course, after tonight, this is going to go to all the standing committees for you know further review. Uh, but we wanted to give you the highlights. So, uh, do I have a clicker? Or do you got it for me? I can do it. All right. Go ahead. It'll be there momentarily. Just close it down and bring it back up. It does say it's there. We go. Oh. All right. Gotta love technology. So our goals with the budget, as they've been over the last several years, is one to reduce debt, um, two to continue to fund capital three, zero increase to the levy, and four, um, as you guys found out um, a couple weeks ago, to maintain the city's favorable bond rate, uh, which we have, was just reaffirmed by Moody's at AA2. Next. So from a highlight standpoint, first, um, it's a balanced budget. Um, as you guys get into it, again, the full budget, I believe, was emailed out um, to everybody. It's a balanced budget. Um, no reduction in staff, 2% uh, pay increase for non-rep employees, 25 for police and fire by contract. Um, one of the things that i um, pretty excited about is we may have the opportunity to pay for combined dispatch out of um, general fund instead of having to bond for it. And what I'm extremely excited about is our estimated debt level. You can see in 2010, we were somewhere around the 60-ish million dollar range from a debt standpoint. And by the end of this year, we project it to be at about 32 million. So we've cut the debt in half. What that means in real dollars is obviously interest expenses much less. It's a lesser drag on the general fund. Our levy, what we levy for, still only supports between right around 24, 27 million dollars of of debt levy. So we still have some way, a little bit of way, a little ways to go to get that down. Nancy's going to take us real quickly through the 2016 revenue and expense numbers. Okay, you can see that the um, taxes and is up a bit, and most of that is from the water utility, the in lieu of tax that they pay us. Uh, the permits are pretty stable. Intergovernmental is up a little bit, and that is from the um, from some grants that we're going to be getting and additional um, road aids that we get charges and other services. Some of that is permits that um, the building inspection department will be um, giving or releasing this year. And we'll, you'll see later on that that's going to affect the levy also. And then the other financing is pretty stagnant. Uh, the expense budget, 
general is pretty much the same. Police and fire is up a bit, which police and fire is up. It's up because of the wages increase, but it's down because we're transferring the levy from the, um, oh, sorry. Yes, please. We're transferring the levy from the um, Camo, which is about 700,000 to the county. So police and fire is going down 700,000, but it's also going up um, for salaries and benefits. Public works is pretty stable. Development is down a little bit and other is pretty stable. Okay. Apparently technology is not our friend today. No, it didn't pop up. Shut it down. Yeah, I can shut it down again. Go ahead. Back up. Oh, really? I think it's com I think it's flashing with four dots. Oh. Is what's happening? All right, well, we're going to forge ahead um, as she gets us back up and running. Uh, first, next slide would have been some future challenges. Um, We've talked about this last year and it still holds true. The motor vehicle fund has about two to three years of balance left. Um, the current balance is about 1.2 million uh, and DPW alone has a request for 1 million in for 2016 alone. Um, if that fund goes to zero, that's about a $225,000 hit to the general fund. Um, so that's something that we need to look at and we need to deal with um, over the next year or so. Special assessments fund and the debt service fund um, there's about four to five years left in that particular fund and that fund is really used um, The special assessments fund has been used to cover some of the shortfall in the debt levy fund um, so again reducing our debt um, There's the budget appropriations there we are We'll come back to the budget appropriations in a moment. So let's just go ahead next slide Hopefully there we go So estimated uh, 15 debt as I mentioned roughly about 32 million Optimal would be about 24 million by year 2018, and that would allow for our levy to completely cover, our debt levy to completely cover the amount of debt we have. Um, the current fund balance, as I mentioned, is about 1.5 billion, or excuse me, million, I wish it was billion. Next slide, please. A Couple future challenges, of course, combined dispatch, about two and a half million dollar cut, our nut to crack, and that should be end of 2016, early 2017, depending on when the county. Um, is ready to open as uh, Nancy indicated um, we will be transferring bodies and levy starting January 1 um, to the county and that's again because it's a clean break um, so that's why you'll see the amount of revenue that we have go down a little bit um, that levy is going to the county for that so if we bonded for it um, there really wouldn't be much in that particular year for capital improvements that's why um, our hope is that we have the ability to take it out of the general fund um, so we can still bond for capital. Expenditure restraint, um, we have to deal with this every year. Um, that's the cap that's put on us um, for expenditures or increasing expenditures. That's about 525,000 for 2016. And of course, um, city hall renovations. Um, this building is getting older and older. Alderman Bellinger and others have been on a committee to look at alternative uses um, for city hall. Um, and alternative placements if necessary, um, but that could be somewhere in the five to seven million dollar range uh, to renovate this building. Next slide, please. Some future deficits. Um, we've, when we look at our projections in the 17 and 18, um, 17 um, is probably the bleakest, um, at about 635,000. 2018, Things start to look a lot better with a lot of the net new construction coming online. Um, certainly the 800 pound grill is the acuity project. Um, as those things start coming online, we start recognizing revenue or tax revenue from those. The nut gets a lot better, but keeping in mind that 2018, of course, is also a contract year for our police and fire. And of course, the limitations of Act 10, the current garbage fee is grandfathered, but it expires at the end of 2016. Um, you know, in any new fee, would reduce our levy. So we can't just go out there and fee for things. Um, that reduces our levy you know, appropriately with the exception of a, of a wheel tax. So where are some future opportunities? 
Again, I'm very excited about where our budget is for 2016. I'm sure there'll be some tweaks and some conversation around it, but it's a balanced budget and I believe it's a good budget, but that means we have to start planning a little bit further ahead, in this case into 16 or 17 and 18. So where are some opportunities? Um, again, we mentioned um, the increase in tax revenue due to the net new construction. If everything goes kind of as planned, um, that could be very significant in 17 and 18. Um, again, one of the thoughts is to possibly roll the motor vehicle fund into the general fund um, as long as we are okay with the expenditure restraints um, by adding that expense back into the general fund. Combined dispatch, again, um, could possibly fund or all or a portion of that from our general fund reserve so we wouldn't have to necessarily bond for that and we could use that bonding for capital. The benefit package, as many of you guys are aware this year, we went to an HSA uh, along with our traditional plan. Maybe an opportunity to look at going to an HSA only plan um, for our employees. Um, that'll be something that I'm sure will be discussed as part of the salaries and grievances. And also, of course, increasing the employee cost share. Currently, employees cover about 15% of their health-related cost, uh, provided that they do the health <coughs> risk assessment and uh, those types of things. Um, as many of you may or may not know, our assessor has uh, decided to retire. Um, and so one of the opportunities out there may be to outsource that office. Um, we had some unsolicited uh, bids come in um, for that. Estimate would be about 100000 a year that we could save in outsourcing. Again, a little more exploration needs to be done on that. But that's an, an opportunity that could come up in the very near future. From a review standpoint, again, this is the very preliminary portion of the budget show. Um, it'll be reviewed by all outstanding committees in August. Um, the full budget will come back to finance, hopefully early September, um, after some rigorous um, review and conversation. And then it'll be referred by, reviewed by finance in its entirety and referred to council um, in the October, um, November timeframe for review and vote. Can you go back to the uh, appropriations one? So as Nancy was indicating, these are the appropriations or expenses, if you will. Um, and Nancy, if you want to just chat briefly about that now that they can all see the slides. Okay. The general is basically um, flat. That's administration. Police and fire are, um, is, it shows that it's down 151. But the salary and benefits with the increases that we have and other increases in there are about 500000 So there is an increase, but because of the um, levy transfer to the county for the combined dispatch, that's why it's showing a negative. Public works is pretty flat. Development is flat, and other is flat. So not a lot of changes other than police and fire. So at this point, now I can go at this point, from the council, any questions, comments, concerns, bribes? I shouldn't say that here, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> to our friends at the press, as Jason's got his hands in his head now. <laughs> to say that out loud? Questions? Again, this will be going to all the standing committees, but I wanted to give you kind of an idea of what we were thinking uh, when we started to put this together um, at a very high level. Um, obviously, each department is going to have things that they need, may need to you know, move the coconuts around, if you will, um, but go. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Don, with that uh, thing that just came up, the 800,000 thing that we have hanging around our neck, mm -hmm. I would imagine that would have a bearing on whether we would be able to uh, fund the dispatch from reserves. It, will, it could, um, assuming that that kind of goes through as it currently is, that would be about a $275,000 nut to us, and then the other taxing entities would make up the remaining 800000 So um, obviously, as a group, we haven't decided what our strategy is and, and will, but um, yeah, we'd have, that's going to be a, a challenge. So. Alderman Heidemann. Thank you, Mayor. Don, uh, yep. what's the difference between bonding for capital improvements versus bonding for uh, combined dispatch? Just more. So if we want, we've been maintaining roughly a two to three million dollar bonding every year to pay for capital. So if we wanted to maintain that and not and allow our our debt levy to continue or our debt to continue to come down, if we decided to bond for both capital and um, 
combined dispatch, we'd have to bond for about four and a half to five and a half million dollars, which now we're going the opposite way. So again, that's the council's decision if they want to you know, do that. Um, you know, I'd prefer to stay where we're at so we're reducing our debt. See no other discussion. I'd like to thank Alderman Hammond for the presentation and also uh, Finance Director Nancy Buss and Administrator Amodio for a great job uh, and the teamwork they did in putting this budget together. Thank you. Next is uh, Mayor's announcements, and I have uh, some proclamations to present tonight. And I'd like uh, Annie Bagnell, the uh, administrator at St. Nicholas Hospital, to join me up here. Uh, they're celebrating a very significant uh, anniversary. Um, proclamation, whereas the HSHS St. Nicholas Hospital is in its 125th year of serving the health care needs of Sheboygan, and whereas the HSHS St. Nicholas Hospital is a not-for-profit hospital sponsored by the Hospital Sisters of St. Francis, whose mission and vision is to provide family-centered, compassionate care without regard to race, creed, or ability to pay. And whereas this is achieved through their core values of respect, care, competence, and joy. And whereas the Hospital Sisters Health System mission is to reveal and embody Christ's healing love for all through their high quality Franciscan healthcare ministry. And whereas sponsored by the Hospital Sisters of St. Francis, HSHS provides a state-of-the-art healthcare to their patients and is dedicated to serving all people, especially the most vulnerable. And now therefore, I, Mike Vandersteen, Mayor of the City of Sheboygan, to hereby congratulate St. Nicholas Hospital on the occasion of its 125th anniversary. And I urge the citizens of Sheboygan to celebrate and consider making a gift to this meaningful, uh, as meaningful them in support of their 125th anniversary campaign. Thank you to HSHS St. Nicholas Hospital for the steps that they are taking to fully renovate the operating rooms and ICU in an effort to improve patient safety, security, increase privacy, improve efficiency, and enhance patients' experience. We congratulate them on this anniversary. Thank you. On behalf of HSHS St. Nicholas Hospital and Hospital Sisters Health System, I'd like to thank Mayor Vandersteen and the Council for your support over the many, many years of service that we provided to, to the community of Sheboygan. Um, many of you aren't unaware, but when we started our hospital journey in 1890, we were actually invited to serve this community's health care needs back then from the, the then bishop. Um, four sisters from Springfield, Illinois, made the trek from Springfield, Illinois' mother house at HSHS to begin our uh, health care ministry in Sheboygan. Um, and today we are going very strong, and we look forward to serving the community for 125 more years. Thank you. And next I'd like to ask Penny Weber to join me. Whereas the National Association of Town Watch is sponsoring a unique nationwide crime and drug and violence prevention program on August 4th of 2015 entitled National Night Out. And whereas the 32nd annual National Night Out provides a unique opportunity for Sheboygan to join forces with thousands of other communities across the country in promoting cooperative police community crime prevention efforts. And whereas Sheboygan Countywide Crime Stoppers plays a vital role in assisting all law enforcement agencies in Sheboygan through joint crime, drug, and violence pre prevention efforts in Sheboygan County and is supporting National Night Out 2015 locally. It is essential that all citizens of Sheboygan be aware of the importance of crime prevention programs and the impact their participation can have on reducing crime, drugs, and violence in Sheboygan. And whereas the police community partnerships, neighborhood safety, awareness, and cooperation are important themes of National Night Out program. Now, therefore, I, Mayor Mike Vandersteen and the Common Council, 
do you hereby call upon all citizens of the city of Sheboygan to join the Sheboygan Countywide Crime Stoppers and the National Association of Town Watch in supporting the 32nd National Night Out on August 4th. And this year they're moving the event to an area on the southern part of the city uh, and Veterans Park will be the center for this this year. So I'll present this to Penny Weber from Crime Stoppers. She's done a great job of working with this program for many years. Thank you, everyone. National Night Out is something that Sheboygan has really embraced, and we're really hoping that a lot of people come out and celebrate with us. Neighborhoods and people in those neighborhoods can make such a difference if they talk to one another and work together, because there's so many good people out in the community, not as many bad. So if the good people are out on the watch and seeing what doesn't belong in their neighborhood, use their neighborhood officers to report that. We have a win-win situation. Now, for those of you not familiar with Sheboygan County White Crime Stoppers, what we really do is provide an anonymous method to give crime information. It can be done with your computer, your smartphone. You can text. You can call our tip line, and you remain anonymous. So if you've got information about a crime and you're just not wanting to give it for fear or for any other reason, please use our tipping methods. Thank you very much. Next on the agenda, we'll conduct a hearing. Uh, it's item 2.1, a hearing pursuant to a notice published and personal notices sent out by the city clerk. There's a hearing scheduled for this evening to amend the text of the city of Sheboygan official zoning ordinance relating to a supermajority requirement of the amendment to zoning regulations and the official zoning ordinance. Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Please come forward. Can we have your name and address again? Mike Burnett, 1925 South 26th Street. And I know it, traditionally nobody speaks on any of these things. It's usually because nobody knows what's going on. Same as me once again. 2.1, the hearing pursuant to a notice published in person notice sent by the city clerk, la, 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 la. Zoning ordinance related to, to the supermajority requirement permitted to zoning regulations and official zoning ordinance. And I can only assume that this is in response to what I would what was, a, to me, a very fun night in Uganda following the tweets of Jason Smathers and uh, a moment where all of a sudden everything kind of came to a little stop because they realized there was no supermajority. And I understand that that's just an isolated weirdness, and I'm sure this has nothing to do with that. But why would you be removing this supermajority? Of what reason? Where did it come from? Um, basically, if that is the case, it seems that it kind of was working and doing what it needed to do. It added for a lot of discussion in the city, gave people more time to talk about things, ended up the same results, but once again, to me, this is basically a sister move to 8.1, and it's basically just reducing the ability to do things. And it's like when things are that close, it seems to me there's a reason for it. And what will happen will happen, but that's all I got. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else wishing to be heard? Please come up. Just need your name and address, please. Debbie Dimna, and it's 1704 North 35th Street. Um, I think that was uh, an ordinance that helped the people um, be able to be heard and I think all what the city is about is to have the people be represented and uh, I think this is in response to the zoning ordinance that you know we wanted to protect because we wanted to protect our homes and our home values and the character of our uh, of our neighborhood 
And so we gathered together enough signatures to be able to make it be a supermajority. And if it's reduced to not needing the full council, then I don't know what the quorum is. I think it's about 11 people, but that would make only needing eight council members to vote against uh, uh, the people's um, desire for the zoning to stay the same. So that means only half the... Um, only half the council members would need to vote um, against the the people's wishes, you know. So I really think this is a bad move, and I think it's a move to take away the democratic rights of the citizens of Sheboygan. And since I think the aldermen are supposed to be representing the citizens of Sheboygan, it, that ordinance needs to be to stay in place because I, I can't see how it would be helpful to give people less voice um, unless it's we're changing the government and, and not making it democratic anymore. But I thought that, you know the aldermen are supposed to be representing the people. So I think if the people go to all the work to get a petition signed, that's their strong um, testimony to keep things the way they are. And um, so I think that should be listened to. Um, I mean, because otherwise all everyone's neighborhoods are in danger of being ch rezoned and zoning ordinances are there for a reason. Um, it's to um, safeguard people's neighborhoods because people's property, it's all about location, location, location. And um, it's not the house, it's where it's located that determines the price. Anyway, thank you. Thank you very much for those comments. Is there anyone else who wishes to be heard? Please come forward. Can we use Alderman Herman's mic? Yeah. Maybe that would be better. Yep. Let's grab the microphone there on that desk. And then just name an address. Yes, my name is Anise de Muna, and I reside at 1704. North 35th Street, can everyone hear me? Nope. All right, is this better? That's close yeah, as you can. As close yeah. as you can. <laughs> All right. So I'm speaking today on behalf of the zoning change regulation, and because I would like, I would strongly urge you to vote no to this zoning change regulation. It appears to me as though it's changing what was formerly a de democratic process into a dictatorship. And honestly, it may seem really nice when you're in the power position to have a dictatorship. But let's say the tables get turned at some point and you're not in the power position anymore. Then at what point will it seem not so great anymore? It reminds me of a story that we had once where they, uh, it was in some type, of, uh, some type of dictatorship. And they said, you know, when they came for the Jews, I didn't care because I wasn't Jewish. And when they came for the gays, I didn't care either because I wasn't gay. When they came for the blacks, I didn't care either. But then when they came for me, there was nobody else to stand up for me and say that this wasn't right. So it may sound good right now. Maybe your neighborhoods are not in danger of being changed in any way. And that's, you know, that's wonderful. But let's say that gets changed. What will you have to fall back on? What will you have to change? Do you like the idea that eight people on this council get to decide how your neighborhood is being changed? And what if you're not on the council anymore? What will that give you as a way out. You won't have these options anymore. And if you don't have the law on your side, you don't have anything else either because people's wills are very fickle. So you're only going to have eight people deciding how everything's going to change and a multi-billion dollar business that is not going to care either. Believe me, I've been there. I mean, my father worked for an org for a multi-million dollar business. And let me tell you, when push comes to shove, they don't care. It may seem like they do, but honestly, they don't care at all. The bottom line is all that matters to them. And therefore, this whole scheme may have sounded great now. Their promises sound great. Of course they do. I mean, honestly, it's marketing. They've probably even gotten degrees in it. 
lies, etc. But when it comes down to it, what's going to happen when it all falls through? They're not going to care. What are you going to hold them to, honestly? If you don't have laws, etc., like zoning regulations to protect your neighborhood, you won't have anything else. So please consider this, if not for our neighborhood, which it might be too late for, at least for your own sake. Don't do this. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Is there anyone else wishing to be heard? Is there anyone else wishing to be heard? Is there anyone else wishing to be heard? Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to close the hearing. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in, in favor of closing the hearing, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda. The consent agenda is items 3.2 through 3.26. Uh, item 3.21 will be referred to City Planning Commission rather than voted on tonight. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I move to accept and file our, all ROs, accept and adopt all reports of committee, and put all resolutions and ordinances upon this passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Alderman Heideman, under discussion. Under discussion, I'd like to bring uh, item 3.22 uh, for a, a, a separate vote. Is there any objection to separating 3.22? Was it 2-2? Two, two? Yep. Seeing no objection, the item's on the floor for discussion. Please go ahead. Thank you. Um, obviously, having spent my almost my entire career on the council of the city of Sheboygan on DPW within that committee and working with the, the various department heads, a task force on our city streets, I, quite honestly, I don't know what they're going to find other than the fact that we don't have the money to pay for the streets. I believe Dave Beeble and his staff do a fine job, and the committees that, that I've, the committee members that I've served have always made that a priority. We know the responsibility that we have at that committee, and David knows his responsibility along with his staff. I don't believe another committee is warranted. Thank you for those comments. Is there any discussion on the motion? Um, let's see, Alderman Donahue. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just as an initial matter, uh, this really has is no reflection at all on um, the, the Department of Public Works or Director Beeble in terms of his ability and his department's ability to analyze the problem and also to analyze the resources that are available to us. In no way, shape, or form is this meant to be a suggestion that somehow Director Beeble and the Department of Public Works is not aware of the problem and has not thought through the various issues that are faced. Here's what the resolution is about. It's about asking this council through a special committee, a task force, to look in more detail as to ways that we might possibly solve a problem that I think all of our constituents would indicate is a pretty serious problem. The condition of our roads, and we are certainly not alone in the state of Wisconsin, the condition of our roads is not good. The resources that are currently available to ensure that our roads are kept up, those resources are not available to us as matters stand right now. For those of you who were present when Todd Berry, the head of the Wisconsin Taxpayer Alliance, uh, spoke to the Committee of the Whole, I believe, in January. Um, Mr. Berry, who's uh, fiscally quite conservative, I think did an excellent job of outlining the issues that are presented to municipalities in the light of either stable or shrinking uh, revenues from the state for road repairs and maintenance. We are, as our budget presentation indicated, we are strictly limited in the amount of the levy that we can assess our citizens. In other words, we can't keep the status quo right now. The amount of money that is available in the budget for road repair will stay just the same. Our roads will stay the same. Some will get repaired, some won't. Our constituents, however, will also continue to be really unhappy about the state of the roads. So what is this task force proposed to do? And I will tell you, I come to this from the perspective that when you come to really large issues, there's nothing wrong with asking citizens what they think about new and different ways to look 
at possible revenue sources or other ways of dealing with the problem. Now, our building use committee is composed of alder persons and uh, members of the community, particularly architects, but also just members of the community. No one is suggesting that Dave Beeble doesn't understand what's wrong with City Hall. We agree that Dave knows what's going on at City Hall. We agree that something needs to be done, but it's not something that we just want to ram through as, as council members and not get more input from our citizens. On these great big issues, there's nothing wrong with asking citizens how they feel about something. I've had the opportunity to observe uh, in detail two citizen, community, uh, citizen task force working on um, uh, issues uh, relating to the school district. Those citizens committees had, I guess I would call a, a, a value and they had um, an integrity that came to them because they weren't part of the system. They weren't council people, they weren't staff people. Eldon Berg and I talked about this and we thought that we could bring a similar model to the city council. These folks will include the, a couple of alder people, will certainly have staff input from Dave Beeble, but we'll be able to look at what other communities are doing because other communities are doing things a little bit differently than we are, perhaps assess whether this is something that citizens want to take to a referendum. There are all sorts, there's a range of possibilities. But this citizens committee will have integrity and, um, and, and a respect, not respectability, but um, the fact that it comes from citizens with input from, from alders and also from staff makes their uh, recommendations to this council. Um, you know, I'm, <laughs> there's one particular word and it's just escaping me, but in any event, it, it gives uh, the process um, uh, more respectability, I guess is, is what I'm gonna call it. I understand Alderman Heidemann is, ex is upset about this and truly, Joe, this has nothing to say about the DPW department. We know they do a good job. We know that their staff is extremely skilled. And frankly, Dave's, Dave Beeble's presentation to us on infrastructure issues is what me, got me originally thinking about this because he's the one who's been able to suggest to us that we've got big problems here and we don't have the resources available to us just now to really get a good grasp on how we solve this. Now, this task force meets. It looks at some considerations. It provides a report to the council. The council can throw that report in the trash. It can say, hey, we're interested in this, or it might get us thinking about different ways to approach it. What I said in strategic fiscal, and I mean it here, is we have nothing to lose by constituting the citizens task force, along with alders and with staff people. And I think we have, if we don't do it, we will lose. It, it's okay involving citizens in these overarching processes on a limited basis, it's a good thing. And it's going to be good for our city, so I would urge you to, to support it. Thanks. <clears throat> Thank you for those comments. Alderman Boring. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I appreciate uh, Alder President Donahue's uh, bringing this forward, but I think it could be solved a lot easier. I think it would be a very good topic for a committee of the whole <laughs> meeting. Um, Mayor, you could advertise the topic the media could advertise the topic. We could have Director Beeble uh, give us a state of the streets. We could uh, maybe have uh, Chief Administrative Officer Amodio give us some possible funding sources. Uh, and I think we could probably, if it was well publicized enough, <coughs> invite the public in, have a good lengthy <coughs> discussion on it. Uh, and if we come up with a scenario of a wheel tax or a half percent sales tax that would be designated just for roads, I certainly would be willing to take a look at that. But I, I really don't think we have to go through every, uh, go through another committee to get that done. Uh, so I'm gonna, make a, I'm gonna make a motion. I don't know if it's the appropriate time or later, but I'm gonna make a motion to, to uh, uh, refer to the committee of the whole. Motion to refer to 
Okay, a motion to refer takes precedence. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Okay, we have a motion. Uh, I'm sorry. All of our bidders. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> and discussion on referred? I don't remember. That's probably not important. We can probably discuss it. Is there any discussion on the referral? All of my bidders. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I, I share the sentiments of uh, all the person, uh, Bourne and Heidemann. We have so many committees. Uh, what's being proposed tonight has no powers outside of the standing committees. Uh, there's already an avenue for public input in the standing committees here in the Common Council chambers. It, it's almost a duplicitous effort <laughs> to say, here's a new place where you can vent. Uh, you, there is no one here in this chamber that doesn't know our roads need work. There is no one here who hasn't heard from their constituents that the roads need work. We get it. We all get it. Uh, piling on this extra layer uh, it is nonsensical. Uh, uh, unless they, uh, this new committee can find some new revenue source or some new technology that we don't know about, I, I don't see a point to any of this. So I, I'm against uh, the creation of the new committee. I'm in favor of at least re referring it to the Committee of the Whole. Thank you. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, goes to the committee of the whole, goes to a committee. I, I, it doesn't matter to me, but I wanted to make a comment upon when you, for those that have actually read the document that, that all the person Donahue submitted, there are six components to this. And the last two are probably the key, and I apologize, I'm going to read them for those that don't have it. Consideration of various funding mechanisms and opportunities, including current practices and methods used in other municipalities. And six, recommendations regarding the desirability and feasibility of said funding mechanisms. We all know the first bullet points that were laid out. You know, Dave Beeble has done a phenomenal job of letting us know what streets, what the cost of repairing those streets are. Um, but getting some input from outside of this body as to whether or not something like a wheel tax, a sales tax, what have you, um, would be viable, I don't think is, is an onerous um, this committee is not going to be charged of la is not going to be charged with years of arduous study. It's a short-term committee just to look at whether there's an appetite for things like sales taxes, wheels taxes, um, you know, whether it's um, what have you. I, there might be other options out there. But so you know, the first four bullet points, yes, I can understand. The last two, I think, are the key to this document. Um, you know, I'll support going you know, either way, um, but I do think that having some sort of um, civilian input is uh, or makes sense to me. So thank you. Alderman Heideman. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Um, okay, everything that's been mentioned about this has to do with wheel tax funding. Um, and if this is such a great idea, why don't we have the state of our public protection? Why don't we have other uh, committees helping our standing committees? Because if this is going to work for public works, it should work for every standing committee. And this is the road we're going down, in my estimation. So again, we can refer this to the committee of whole, which is fantastic, uh, get some more discussion about it, but then at that time, we better be able to, we should be discussing about other uh, task force committees for other uh, portions of our city, not just public works. And what I've been hearing is the financing of it, and DPW doesn't provide the financing finance does. So uh, I don't know how David's going to be able to put up any more stuff in his budget <laughs> unless he gets approval from Jim O'Mody or, or this common counselor through finance. So again, I'm uh, willing to take it on at the Committee of the Whole. Thank you. Um, is there any other discussion? Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Chuck, could you just update the committee now? If it does go to the Committee of the Whole, what is going to the Committee Whole? Whether we have a task force or we don't or whether we Right, the document is what's being referred to the committee okay. as a whole. Okay, thank you. Um, well, I'm going, I'm going to speak 
against this. Um, however, on the, as the document reads, I would be on that committee because I'm the director of public works as well. So whatever transpires and whatever happens, I'm going to support the, the outcome either way. But um, I'm, I'm going to give you my reasons why um, I don't think that this is necessary. Um, I, ever since I've been on the council numerous years, I've, I've sat on the Public Works Committee. I've seen what goes on there. I see the effort that goes through. I see the, the dollars that are uh, requested for capital every year. And uh, I see that get cut every year because, quite frankly, there isn't, isn't the funding to do it. Um, and, you know, we all, we all know that. It's, you know, that's, that's the, the game that, we, that we're playing. Um, the city administrator and Don have done an outstanding job, as previously noted, in reducing the city's debt. And I think that's vitally important. So we've got different scenarios that we can look at. We can, we can borrow and bond for more dollars. Uh, for streets in, in infrastructure, but again, as, as uh, Alderman Hammond mentioned earlier, he doesn't think that's kind of the direction we should be going. Uh, we could have a, a county sales tax. Um, you know, we could, you know, petition the county to implement a sales tax and hope and pray that they uh, would divvy out the revenue from that in an equitable fashion. But uh, those of you that were present for the um, combined dispatch, you know, I wouldn't put a lot of faith in that. Um, you know, I think the chances of that being done are slim to none as far as an equitable disbursement. So I wouldn't be in favor of that either. Uh, we could eliminate all capital, capital requests and just only fund roads. That's an option. We could do a wheels tax. Uh, we could assess property owners and get more aggressive and do more streets and assess more, pro more property owners. Um, but I think we found out when we did Eisner Avenue, that's not really a popular thing to do either. Or, you know, we could raise a tax levy uh, by the limits that are established with net new construction. So we could do that as well. So we know what funding mechanisms are out there. Um, and I've been, you know, kind of surprised, in, pleasantly surprised by the amount of constituent feedback that I've gotten um, on this issue. So, Jason, they do read your articles. I've been getting emails. I've gotten phone calls. I've gotten texts. And I spent the weekend at the Gus Macker, and I had people come up to me and discuss this issue with me at the Gus Macker, too. And every single one of them stated, why would you need another committee to say, everybody knows what's going on. We know what the situation financially is with the city. That's why we vote for you as an alderman, is to make these decisions, and that's the way it should be done. To a person, that's what they all said to me. And, you know, so... You know, for the, those reasons, you know, I'm, I'm not going to support it. Um, I am in favor of citizen input, and a perfect example of that would be the Building Use Committee. On that committee, we've got designers, architects, engineers, and we've got a financial person that's going to be joining the committee in our next meeting. Um, those are resources that we don't, and expertise that we don't have at the city. We have for the streets all the expertise we need. David Beeble does an excellent job providing the detail and the data that we need, and we've got resources uh, in the finance department uh, to address any of these funding mechanisms and any road we want to go down. So, you know, I would be in favor of anybody bringing anything forward. If somebody wants to have, you know, has an idea and wants me to bring it forward on a funding mechanism for something, I will certainly author it and, and bring it forward as well um, and, and let it, you know, pass or fail on its own merits. So that's where I stand. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Is there any other discussion? <clears throat> okay, we're voting to refer resolution number 41 to the Committee of the Whole. Would the clerk please call the roll for passage. Six ayes, six noes. I'll vote, I'll vote no. Then uh, the main motion is back on the floor to set up this committee. Is there any further discussion on that motion? Alderman Heidemann. Uh, just so that I understand, Mayor, then this is whether or not um, this is a vote on, uh, again, I'm not going to be in favor of this. So... 
I would think that, that it's going to come out about the same. So um, this is a singular vote whether or not we want to have this committee, and this is a separate item from the consent agenda. It doesn't have anything to do with the rest of the consent agenda, right? Correct. Right. Is there any other discussion on the main motion? Who made the main? I mean, we pulled it out of consent. Who's actually making the motion? Wait a minute. And I know you pulled it out, but who's making the motion? Are we making the motion to accept and adopt and pass the resolution? Second. That's what's on the floor right now. Okay. okay. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Everybody know what they're voting on? An I vote is to, an I vote would be to form yes. the committee? Mm -hmm. Correct. And no vote would be not to form it. Four ayes, eight noes. Motion is defeated. Okay, now we're back to the consent agenda with item 3.21 and 3.22 uh, eliminated. Is there any other discussion on the consent agenda? Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. I need to have a 3.7 a separate vote on that. I need to abstain. Uh, Mr. Keel from HD, HC Denison is our financial advisor, so I need to abstain. Okay, 3.7 is an RC by finance who is uh, referred RO number 51 of 1516 by the city clerk submitting a claim from Robert Keel for alleged damages when he tripped outside the H.C. Denison building on the alley near U.S. Bank parking lot and broke his iPhone glass and ruined his pants and recommends denying the claim and directing the city attorney to send notice of disallowance. And the motion is to accept and adopt. Alderman Hammond. Hold for a separate vote. I'll move to accept and adopt. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. It's on the floor for discussion. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage. Eleven eyes and one abstention. Motion passes. Then we're back to the consent agenda motion with those three items eliminated. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call uh, for the consent agenda vote. Twelve ayes. Motion passes. Going on to reports of officers. Item 4.1 is an RO by the Director of Planning and Development submitting a copy of the updated bylaws for the Sheboygan Harbor Center Business Improvement District, which adds an additional board member. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think for those of us that have been around a while, that's the longest consent agenda in history, I think. But um, I would first move to suspend the rules. Second. Thank you for that motion to suspend. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Move to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Items 4.2 through 4.6 will be referred to various committees. Item under resolutions, items 5.1 through 5.3 will also be referred to various committees. Moving on to reports of committees. Item 6.1 is an RC by finance who has referred resolution number 57 of 1516 by Alderman Hammond authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2015 budget to establish appropriation for the city portion of the fiber optic network intergovernmental cooperative agreement. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion under discussion. Seeing no discussion, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Mm -hmm. 
12 ayes. Motion passes. Item 6.2 is an RC by law and licensing to whom it's referred pursuant to RO number 54 of 1415 by the city clerk license applications for the period ending December 31st of 2016 and June 30th of 2017 and recommends that the beverage operator's license number 0796 be denied based on her failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on her license application or record of violations related to the licensed activity and her record as a repeat law offender and failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Please go ahead under discussion. Is Amy Grain here this evening? She is not. We did invite her to our meeting um, two separate occasions and she did not show up. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Twelve eyes. Motion passes. <laughs> Item six point three is an RC by law and licensing who was referred pursuant to RO number fifty four of fifteen sixteen by the city clerk license applications for the period ending December 31st of 2016 and June 30th of 2017 and recommends that the beverage operator's license number 0808 be denied based on her failure to accurately review all relevant convictions on her license application, her record of violations related to the licensed activity, her record as a repeat law offender, and her failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. Is Lorena Calderon here this evening? Um, she is here. Um, I would ask that we refer this back to the committee because then we will have representation by the police department um, as well as the city attorney with the correct notes that we need. Second. Thank you for that motion to refer. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, please call the roll for passage. Okay, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. That will be referred. Item 4.6 will be referred to the uh, planning, City Planning Commission. Item 6.5 is an RC by finance to whom is referred resolution number 56 of 1516 by Alderman Bellinger approving a territory amendment number one to the project plan of tax incremental financing district number six. Alderman Hammond. Mr. I move to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion. Seeing no discussion, would the clerk please call the roll for passage? <clears throat> Twelve ayes. Motion passes. Item 6.6 .6 and 6.7 will be referred to various committees and under ordinances. 7.1 through 7.3 will again be referred to the various committees. Moving on to matters laid over. Item 8.1 is RO number 61 of 1516 by the City Planning Commission to whom is referred general ordinance number 8 of 1516 by Alderman Bellinger amending sections 15.902 and 15.903 of the city zoning ordinance relating to the supermajority requirement for amendment to the zoning regulations in the official zoning uh, map. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I move to accept and file and pass the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Any discussion on the motion? Alderman B Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, when we went through the process with uh, Aurora and the Field of Dreams, um, the, the neighborhood got together, organized, and put together a protest pe petition, and it required a three-quarter majority. And what, when um, I became aware of this and, and looking into it, I, I also became aware that our city ordinance does not match the state statute. And all I'm doing with this motion is, or, or change in ordinance, is to get our city ordinance to match the state statute. Um, we, we all know what happened this past spring. We had an alderman who had 
uh, legal, ethical, and moral issues caused him to resign. We had an alderman who had a health issue that required immediate hospitalization and couldn't be here. Um, under the city ordinance, the way it was written then, their absence constituted a no vote. So all I'm asking in this ordinance, the change is, and city attorney, please correct me if uh, I make any misstatements or misrepresent what this ordinance's changes is to do, is um, what it's going to do is it's going to still maintain the supermajority, the three-quarter vote. The only thing that's going to, take, to change is it's going to be a, those members present. It's not going to be the entire 16 people should we have extenuating circumstances like we did this spring. So um, I, I'm not trying to, to change the democratic process. I'm not trying to take any power away from any citizens that feel they don't have any recourse or any way to um, address zoning changes. All that is still in place. The three-quarter majority is still in place. And um, this isn't an attempt, um, as said earlier, to take over and become a dictator or have a dictatorial process in place and ramrod or run over neighbors or anybody when it comes to rezoning. Uh, that's not the intent. I purposely waited till after the whole um, Field of Dreams in Aurora issue had subsided, was over with and voted on before I brought this up. This is in no way a vindictive or spiteful move on my part. All it is is to get our ordinance to come in line with the state statute. And in my discussion with the uh, city attorney at the time, that this process comes into play so infrequently that we just didn't realize that our city statute was different than the, than the or our city ordinance was different than the state statute. And that, you know, this years and years ago when the state changed the statute, for whatever reason, um, the city, you know, didn't comply or make the, sa the same changes. So um, I hope I'm stating that correctly. Good, thank you. So that's, that's the, only, the only change in the reason I'm doing it. It's not anything vindictive. I certainly want to keep a democratic process. I want to keep the ability for uh, anybody that wants to do a protest petition to be able to do it. I just don't want people that are not present due to extenuating circumstances to count as a no vote. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Bourne, did you ring no, in? he answered it, thank you. Okay, is there any other discussion? Alderman Bitters? Uh, from uh, Attorney Adams, uh, just some clarification. Uh, thank you. Uh, members present or members that have r resigned, is there a distinction between the two in terms of how this ordinance is written? There's no distinction between the two in how this ordinance is written. Under the current city ordinance, it requires three-fourths of all 16 members, even if, they've, even if they've resigned. Under the current ordinance, it would be three-fourths of those present. You still have to have a quorum, uh, but it would require three-fourths of those present. And it's, and it's basically taking the language from the state statute 62.23, sub 7, sub D, sub 2M, sub A. Um, just taking the language straight from there. And under the uh, proposed revision, now if a member resigned just prior to that vote, that does that change, it, it changes the equation as it were? For if someone that? were to resign from the council before a vote that was affected by this, and as far as we can tell, there's only ever been one in the history of the city, um, that person's vote would no longer count as a no vote. You would need to get three-fourths of those present. Ass assumedly, that would be some number of 15 or under since one uh, alder person would have resigned at that point. All right, thank you. Thank you for those questions. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage?
12 ayes. Motion passes. Uh, next is other matters, city attorney. Uh, 9.1 is a resolution to authorize a transfer of appropriations in the 2015 budget. That would be referred to the finance committee. 9.2, submitting a communication from Melissa Brush uh, regarding information on the sale of the Field of Dreams and money uh, the Sheboygan Area School District uh, may owe the city of Sheboygan for the sale of the Field of Dreams. Be referred to the Finance Committee. 9.3, submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31st, 2015 and June 30th, 2017. And be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee. Next, uh, we've got a proposed uh, closed session on the agenda and um, asked for Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to convene in closed session, session under exemption contained in section 19851E Wisconsin statutes where competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session for purpose of deliberation related to possible development on the riverfront. Second. We have a, a motion and a second uh, to go into closed session. Would the clerk please call the roll? All eyes. Motion passes. For our viewers at home, I'd just like to let you know that uh, we will not be going into open session after the closed session, so uh, we won't be coming back uh, until our next meeting. With that, we'll take a short uh, recess and, re uh, re what and reconvene what shortly. <laughs>